A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. This is the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. We're talking matters basketball. We did it last weekend and we're doing it again this particular weekend, trying to congratulate the boys, the Kenya Morans, for their sterling performance during Afrocan Championship that happened in Bamako, Mali of Kenya. Kenya Morans getting to the finals contrary to expectations despite uh, lack of proper preparations, lack of proper funding from the government, they defied all odds, performing very well, very well and, you know, uh, playing against Democratic Republic of Congo in the finals. And uh, unfortunately, they lost, but the fantastic show. And in the studio, I'm glad to be joined by two gentlemen who form an integral part as far as the playing unit of the Kenya Morans is concerned. They were in Mali, Bamako, and they featured prominently for the national team. And the Ariel local yeah. alongside Valentine Yandik uh, uh, Yakinda, Yakinda. Yeah. joining us this particular afternoon. Ariel, good yeah. afternoon and good to be with us. Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Valentine, Kenya Ports Authority, the team that you, both of you feature for, is the one dominating. They contributed immensely to, you know, national team. What has been the secret at KPA? Yeah, at, at KPA, uh, the management is committed to the players' welfare. And we have a nice gym in Mombasa and good training conditions. Yeah. I know this particular afternoon you have a game. We shall be coming on to that. But before we do, mm -hmm. how is the experience? What was the feeling, you know, representing the country, donning the national team colors and featuring uh, in continental competition? Well... The feeling is great, you know, like for the dream of every basketballer is to play for the national team. That's, that comes first. If you ask any baller, they will tell you that they want to don the national colors and represent the flag. So for us, me and him, actually, we were called to the team together. We've been playing together for a long time. So for us, the experience was great. And we were talking about winning. So when we went out there in Mali, it was great. We didn't expect to go that far. It was great. So for us, it's like a dream come true. Dream come true. The strategy yeah. that you think uh, played very well for the Morans, because you entered into the tournament as underdogs, but defying all odds, just losing two games, I think the first one against Angola and yes. Democratic Republic of Congo in the finals, and you know, winning against the heavyweights of the tournament like Morocco. Yeah. What was the strategy? Um, our, our strategy was to play a first game. Because, you know, as Kenyans, we are very athletic, yeah. And we also had no fear for anyone. So we approach every game because we are underdogs, but we, are, we go heads high. We have nothing to lose, so we play our best. Yeah. Prior to that, uh, had you, you know, were you subjected to that level of exposure playing at the big stage, at the continental level, and did you experience much stage fright? No, no, no. Uh, for, for my case and him, we've played the international tournaments before. And we've played in outside countries and uh, I've played for the under-18 at FIBA Africa. And him too, we've played a lot of uh, national team games. So it was, uh, we were used to it and it was nothing new. Ariel, you know Taila Okari is not here, but he, he was the MVP. Yeah. What was his impact being in the squad? Man, the guy is unbelievable. Is unbelievable. I remember against uh, we played uh, Cote d'Ivoire mm -hmm. and we were tied at 85 85. So the coach drew a play and said, uh, Tyler, you're supposed to come this screen, you go <laughs> over this side, and then you take the ball on the other side and you make a play. Then the guy stopped the coach and he told the coach, You guys just give me the ball, get out of the way. Let me win this game for you guys. <laughs> I was like, okay, the confidence, let, let, let me wait and see. And we were all like this, yeah, watching and waiting. Yeah. Sure. So 15 yeah. seconds to go, he takes the ball. I isolated one guy with the ball with like a second to go. He made a shot and he made it. We won 87-85. That guy, Slim he, margin. he's a killer. That's what I can say. That is a certified killer. He's a killer. Do you think also, you know, the squad that comprises of players featuring in local and overseas leagues, youth and experience, you know, that blend, did it work for the team? Yeah, it, it worked pretty well because we had uh, good leadership from the older guys. Then our local guys are also solid. Yeah. And the, our internationals also brought the ex experience yeah, and gave us the much needed confidence. Coach Cliff, or what can we say about him? Yeah, he's a pretty intense coach and he believes in us. So we have to believe too. 
and it really motivates us to get the win. And it goes for the win, it doesn't. It doesn't go like 50-50. Yeah. When, when, when yeah. Valentine says that, you know, yeah. the coach believed in him, several times we've had scenarios where mm -hmm. uh, players win for the coaches. Mm -hmm. Did the same situation happen for you? No, no, the guy prepared as well. He, on matters of uh, preparing the players to go and compete, he did a great job. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, he planted like uh, seeds in our mind, like you guys are great, you guys are great. Our motto when we were leaving the country was like, uh, you are fixed-minded about yeah, the he, positive it's like outcome. He was just putting the winning, winning, winning thing in our mind. Then yeah. they said to see Ogope, not to see Darao. You know, when we, tambua, when we go there, they say Apana <laughs> Tambua, because those countries, those countries, matters basketball, uh, they are big. So when we got there, you know, guys were like, "Oh, Kenya," but the coach is amazing. Yeah. And uh, in terms of, you know, establishment structures of those countries that participated in African Championship, uh, facility-wise, what did you learn, especially from the host country, Mali? Mm -hmm. Do you think there is something that Kenya is supposed to learn from them if we have to get our basketball to another level? Yeah, yeah, we have to learn, uh, we have much to learn from these countries. They have a good stadium in good condition, even the, their primary schools or or secondary schools, they have like indoors and nice training facilities, yeah. yeah. And you guys featured at the tender age and 18. Do you think uh, the local stakeholders of the sport have put in place mechanisms to, you know, have you replaced when you get off the scene? Because, you know, youth structures are also paramount. Do you think enough has been done? No. To ensure that <laughs> <I think laughs> when you exit the scene, we have the upcoming area, the like upcoming Valentine. No, I think that's where we go wrong. Like the feeder programs that yes. are supposed to to feed like the senior teams. When the guys get old, the veterans and they leave the scene, we need to have like structures. Like in Mali, uh, the schools, when the schools are closed, you, we found that the students have already been signed into different clubs in different sports, you know? So, Basketball, you find under uh, 10, under uh, 16, under 18. They're already training. We used to go to practice 8 a.m. in the morning and we used to find kids at the court. They have so many basketball courts and kids were there working. They're just working out. So you can see like the Malian team, the under, under, 19. under 19, is beating teams in Rwanda, yeah? Yeah, no, they're beating they, they're in Rwanda, yeah. the ladies. Yeah, the ladies. They are beating good teams, Egypt, they're beating Angolans, they're just, their programs are nice, you know. If we can copy a leaf, you can just copy half of that idea and bring it to our country. We can change the system from down there all the way up. And that will be an amazing thing for Kenyan basketball. And when we talk about feeder systems, what do you make of, you know, the institutional structures that have been put in place? Because several players have emanated from you know, universities, Strathmore, mm -hmm. USIU. I attended a school where a player who featured alongside you, Griffin Ligare, yeah. was the tactician for our university side. And, you know, my body physique couldn't allow me to play <laughs> basketball, but was a huge follower of yeah. basketball. In terms of institutional structures, have they been put in place to ensure that it's all systems go? Yeah, okay, we have few universities who take it so seriously, like Strathmore and USIU, yeah, they have uh, good basketball teams. Yeah, they, they get guys from high school, give them scholarships, yeah. like good players, you know. So uh, they have a good team and, and the players get well developed. So I, I think that that's a good thing and more and more of, of our institutions. So someone is not, is not just playing basketball during Kusa games for the sake of allowance, it's passion yeah. and love for the sport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> KPA, let's talk about now the club you guys feature for. It has dominated basketball headlines for a while. Yeah, five years now we've just been winning. <laughs> <laughs> so this weekend they are winning as well? Yeah, we're winning by 15, as I said yesterday. <laughs> they will win by 15. Which team are you playing against? Our arch rivals, Lindsay. But they it's know. an equally good side. Yeah, the results will be the same. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs men. <laughs> yeah, the results will be the same. Government funding, oh. you know, where I was watching the game from, some people are expressing mm -hmm. their dissatisfaction over how 
you know, those who are supposed to fund federations, how basketball has yeah. not been treated the same way other sporting disciplines have been treated. Uh, this time round, they came through. We visited uh, Right Honorable Raila, and he came through for us at the last minute. And uh, as, uh, as we said earlier, we want to thank them for that. We want to thank however little the contribution was. So we, we had to get to, to Mali, and they came through at the last minute. And we also have uh, Badua Investment, yeah. the guys for, for from Mad Good. Yeah. They also came through for us at the last minute. And uh, from there, they even sent a guy to Mali with a big yeah, camera. Tony. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Yeah. yeah, he was with us from the first day to the last day. He was with us in Mali. Ensuring that uh, us yeah, in Kenya was can covering watch the proceedings. Everything. He was covering <laughs> everything. When we came back, we were received by the permanent secretary and the Nairobi governor. Uh, and we appreciate, we appreciate all the love. Going forward, I know this is just a start and probably one of uh, the best things we should look forward to. I know in the future, the other, the other assignments, should we look forward to equally good performance from you guys? Yes, yes. I think we should look forward to even a better performance. Because uh, Badua Investment, they, they came like two weeks to the Zone 5 yeah. championship and we won it. That's just two weeks into the tournament. So what if we get more of these uh, sponsors and investors in good time, you know? It will be huge. So financial sponsorship is critical. It's very critical. Yeah, we, everybody needs that because <laughs> you cannot go to train to a facility like Kasarani if you don't have money. You, uh, training in Nyayo, the gym is good, but it's not up to international standards. You can train in Nyayo, but you cannot play in a gym like Nyayo when you go out of the country. Oh. So... We need to be in to a place like Kasarani so that we get used to it. So when you get out there, you find that things are familiar. So with money, we can prepare well. With money, you can play a lot of friendlies out of the country, you know. And the players can even, like, they'll be in shape because they can get the uh, better food, better supplements, the weight rooms and everything. But without money, we'll just have to do with... Uh, our famous uh, staple center. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine, yes. is basketball a well-paying sport? Yeah, it's a well-paying sport. He's a rich man. Yeah. He's a uh, rich man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Personally? Yeah, if, if you play out of the country, you'll, you'll, you'll really stick to it because it's, it's rewarding. It's really rewarding. Maybe in, in Kenya we are, we are yet to come to that, but outside the country or in these bigger leagues, it's really paying. And as Kenyans, we, we should go towards that. And you guys are ambitious. Are you looking forward to professional basketball featuring for overseas clubs? We uh, already did that. We, we you already did for, that, uh, uh, but you are years. back home with are, KPS. Still hopeful? Yeah, I'm still hopeful. But right now, I don't want to go because of the NBA Africa thing. Our uh, club is the one who's representing Kenya from September. Uh, the games might be in Kenya or Mauritius, so we are waiting for them to confirm. If we qualify, we play in the 12-team uh, league, 12 team league that uh, they, may, they, they announced, I think, two days ago yeah. in Dakar. Yeah. So if we do that, it's going to be huge for Kenya. The competition is going to go a notch higher because only the champions represent the country out there. So the competition here is going to go up a little bit. A lot of sponsors will come in. Yeah. So for us, we don't want to go. We want to stay and play a lot. We want to try and improve the image of the game at home first. Then these young kids, they can come in and they can go maybe make it to the NBA. Valentine, you read from the same script with him. If a lucrative uh, deal comes knocking on the door, you'll opt for it or otherwise? Yeah, money comes. <laughs> 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 I knew it. Uh, money knew comes it. first. Yeah. You will give it a preference. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but the good thing, these outside leagues, the they, 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 they timeline, like the, the season schedule alternates from the Kenyan season. Like right now, we are in the off season from the leagues we played. So you are in Kenya, but you are you're like on holiday, but you can still play and keep yourself active, you know? Yeah. So also the timelines, the seasons differ, so you can play many leagues. Let's talk about uh, the administration of basketball in the country. We've seen mm. people at the helm 
trying to restore the lost glory of the sport, bringing yeah. sanity. Yeah. Uh, Polo Tula, Federation President, people like Cynthia Mumbo, mm -hmm. uh, Sports Connect CEO, you're getting involved in the sport. Uh, do you think that's the way to go? And what do you make, what do you assess of their show so far? Uh, they've been doing great, they've been doing great. Not like before, this time round, uh, the president of the Federation and uh, the treasurer. Peter Orero. Yeah. They have been with us from when we started practice. We actually started this thing way back in 2015. Sure. We started, yeah, we started preparing way back in 2015. We went to South Africa with Cynthia. We played a few games, Nigeria, Mozambique, and the South African team. Then we came back, we won one game. And Mozambique is a good country yeah, in terms Nigerian, of basketball. Nigerian team and the Mozambican team, yo, those guys are good. So when we went there, we won one game. So from that time up to now, we've been preparing slowly by slowly. When they, this time came, they brought in the international players. So the team was already beefed up. And then we started it again from uh, November, playing against Cameroon, Uganda. We lost both matches. The Ghanaian team came to the country. We played again. Ghana living authority. It. Yeah. yeah, I they remember. I watched us. the game. And guys were like, yo, these guys. <laughs> you will flop at yeah. the continental so stage. For us, we were building something slowly by slowly. And the federation guys were with us all the way. So when the time came for the Zone 5 championships in Uganda, the guys were ready. It was just a matter of time. The guys were ready. We traveled with the treasurer to Mali. He was with us until uh, maybe two days before the tournament ended because of commitments at home. They were with us all the way. Yeah. So you believe the Federation has played its role very well? Yeah, they've, they, they, they've come in huge, man. Even the, our chairman used to attend all our practices. Be it in the morning, evening, he was there personally to, to motivate. That gives a uh, moral yeah. booster it's to presence. the team. Yeah. He used to come at 6 a.m. Yeah. When, when we had practice at 6 a.m., he used to show up. So you Cl can see. Club competition locally, I know KPA, Thunder. KPA, uh, the champion. <laughs> <laughs> they have dominated, but do you think the other sides have given much needed competition so that it can be nutritious, so that it's not a one team affair? This year it's different. Even, Even Ulinzi? Yeah, Ulinzi is tough, Thunder is tough, Amoeba is tough. Equity, the Blades? Equity, Blades, all blades of them are as, tough. As, as, as usual. <laughs> they play hard and tough. Yeah. So we have like six teams that can compete for the championship. So, so it, this time round, it's not it's not a precept for even as KPA we have lost to like three games right now. Yeah. So it's not that easy. It's not, it's not going to be easy for us. All we know that like eventually we'll win, but it's not going to. Be easy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is too <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> you believe you will win as yeah, usual. Yeah, sure. Eventually, eventually. Yeah, we'll win. When, Ultimately, the, when the yeah. time comes, we'll win. But the competition is tough. We appreciate it. This so year it's, it's, it's not going to be like a walk in the park like all the other time. Yeah. yeah. This year it's tough. The aspect of floodlight games, uh, because Kenyan basketball fans are so passionate about the sport, and during the live viewing of the final at Nyayo National Stadium Gymnasium, you know, huge fan turnout and even people calling upon the federation to introduce floodlight games so that they can start showing up during evening hours. Do you think it's something that can work and grow and improve the sport? Yeah, uh, sure. It, it it will work out because uh, like most most fans maybe they, they don't know about basketball but if there's fun around it like there's floodlights people are having fun you know it's a friday it will attract more like even people who, who don't know like uh, how many steps you need to go away. <laughs> <laughs> they will attend and watch because there's fun yeah uh, so you know sports is is supposed to be like a fun thing that brings people together yeah or a business you know it's not just about competing but it should be fun and the marketing aspect of the game is in itself is also paramount. Yeah. Because when there is a game, let's say today, there are several games at Nyayo, wow. and uh, you know, there are no enlightenment programs, people are not in the know, so yeah. showing up in large numbers might also not uh, be possible. So marketing aspect of the game, has it been enough in basketball? Lately, lately, uh, since the Mad Good TV came, came through, they, they've been marketing the games well, and they show it live on Facebook. Yeah, and I think more of that should be done, more of the marketing. 
And just before I, for, I forget to ask you this, yeah. you know, the Morans at some point uh, they were accused of you are you are you are you are only targeting three pointers, and yeah. that probably led to your downfall against Democratic Republic of Congo. Do yeah. you think? Do you agree that was your main undoing at some point? No. <laughs> uh, our, 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 our main system of the game, actually our secret was defense. So we were, our, defense, we, our defense, defensive rating was 99.0. Offensive rating was 97.0. So if you look at the other team's defensive ratings, we were ahead. We were like the best team on defense. So from defense, if we get a stop, we were scoring, we were scoring a lot of points running running the floor, getting buckets. When they set their defense and we are coming to offense, we had plays, systems. We were playing inside the system and inside the plays. So from those plays, we had very good shooters on the floor. Very good shooters. Players out there are so big, so it's not easy to get a bucket under the rim. So since most of the guys we had are smart, we were just moving the ball. When you get an open shot from outside, we make it. But the finals, sometimes you win, sometimes yeah, sometimes you lose. You lose. Yeah. On a light note, Valentine, must yeah. someone be told to play basketball? <laughs> Height, aerial ability, is it, is it significant to basketball as a sport for those seeking to play it? Yeah, it's, it, it's an advantage, but it, it, it's not the only thing. Like, we have short players who are solid, like Griffin Ligari. Yeah. So it's not a must you be tall, but you just have to be committed. Every, everybody has a strength, you know, even whether you're short, you're tall, you can just put in work and the work ethic is everything. The work ethic is everything. As we wind up your final thoughts, going forward, the expectation and oh. standards of the game, what are you looking forward to, Ariel? I think right now, uh, the main goal, even if we didn't win that championship, is like Kenyan basketball won in general. So for me, looking forward, uh, guys are motivated out there from whatever little thing we did. Guys are motivated, guys are putting in work. And from where we are right now, I don't think we are going to go down. We are just Val going all the way up. Valentine, your sentiments? Yeah. I think by, by performing well in, in this past championship, it was really huge because everyone is motivated. Even in our estate, the kids were going out in the evening to play. They're saying, man, so it feels like... They're inspired. If I play basketball in Kenya, I'm like a number two in Africa, you know? They feel ah. they belong, you know? It's not only Angola or those others. But yeah. now we feel everyone has the confidence. Everyone wants to play. Yeah, it will really improve. Wow, yeah. fantastic. And oh, once again, congratulations for you no know, spectacular performance in Mali during Afrocan Championship. Mm -hmm. They finished second uh, behind Democratic Republic of Congo, looking once against them in the finals and sterling performance from the boys. Ariel, uh, alongside Valentine, joining us this particular afternoon to tell us their experience at the continental stage playing at the big platform and their expectations going forward. We shall be looking forward to see uh, how you continue glittering uh, for the national team, right? Yeah. Thanks for coming through. Touchline is the show on Y254. We continue, of course, we shall be coming up next with the fans on fan favorite segment and Man United fans are very happy. Harry Maguire he <laughs> has joined them, but, you know, there is some question. Is he worth 80 million pounds? That will be forming the base of our discussion. Don't go away. Stay tuned. <laughs>